Hey guys, welcome back to another tech show video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a device I never thought I needed and in fact never knew existed until now. I'm not going to lie, when I saw this thing for sale online a few months back, I knew I had to have it because Motorola and Star Wars, a dream crossover for both geeks and Star Wars fans, which I would consider myself to be a little bit of both. But I haven't even told you what this is yet. If you haven't already guessed, this is the Motorola Droid 2 R2-D2, a Star Wars Special Edition phone from Motorola in 2010. And you know, it only made sense that they were eventually going to make a Star Wars phone because Droid. In fact, this is a fun fact that I just recently learned. The brand name Droid is, I suppose unsurprisingly, a trademark of Lucasfilm, meaning Star Wars was kind of in the Droid line this whole time. There was another special edition Star Wars Droid phone in 2015, this time being the Droid Turbo 2, but let's just take this one phone at a time. I am planning a much more involved video about the entire Droid line, so if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Anyway, back to the Droid R2-D2, as it's often called for obvious reasons. This phone comes in a very distinctly Star Wars looking box that's meant to mimic the appearance of the totally real compound carbonite with a grungy grey embossed image of the device itself with the words Droid and R2-D2 above and below respectively, written in the fancy Motorola Droid font. On the back of the box you get some more fittingly Star Warsy text, but this time actually giving a hint as to why this thing even exists. This phone was made to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Star Wars Episode V The Empire Strikes Back, which debuted in 1980. From what I can tell, this phone wasn't quite released on the right day or even month, but that's okay. It's here with us today, and definitely one of my favorite phones in my collection, so I'm more than happy to be showing it to you guys. So let's open up the box and see what's inside, beginning with the phone on top. Underneath that we have some unimportant paperwork and an appropriately themed R2-D2 dock, and nothing else. Brand new this would have also come with a charger and some headphones, but those weren't even Star Wars themed so I guess it doesn't even matter. Now to talk about the phone itself, because fortunately for this video there is some more here than just a fancy box and a normal Motorola Droid 2. It's pretty easy to tell that this isn't just any old phone, just take a look at the back. It's designed to mimic the look of an astromech droid, or more specifically, the R2-D2 model. In a rather clever design choice, they've subtly used the already existing camera placement as the droid's eye, or photoreceptor as it's technically called. Of course I didn't have to look that up, everyone knows what R2-D2's eye is called, but anyway, turning our attention to the front, we can see it has a much more subtle design, you might even miss it from farther away or in some lighting conditions. It's still plenty droidy though, and I appreciate the fact that they went for this more classy design instead of a more silly, chaotic one. It's got these subtle little lines and circles around the front camera and ambient light sensor. For my favorite part of this design though, we have to slide open the keyboard and look again at the back of the phone. On the back of the slide you can see the text R2-D2 in that unique droid font like what was on the box. Like I mentioned earlier, this is probably my favorite detail on this device. It really gives some class and maturity to an otherwise somewhat silly design. I'm going to be honest here, as much as I love this thing as a display piece in my collection, this design is somewhat, well, toy-like. But that's completely off topic. Getting back to what we were talking about before, which is this R2-D2 text on the back of the device, not only do I just love that font, but I think it's really nicely framed with these screws and the unintentional wear marks from the sliding mechanism. Moving on to the last aspect of this design I want to mention is the keyboard, and there's really not much to say here. There's no cool font, no cool colors, nothing that makes this keyboard stand out from the normal Droid 2. But enough nitpicking with the design, let's turn it on and see what we've actually got going on with the software. The Droid 2 R2-D2 comes with an appropriately modified startup sequence with some silent Star Wars stuff, and then R2-D2 making his signature chirps and beeps. Once we're in, we can see that there are some things that have been modified to fit the theme. Most obviously, we've got a Star Wars themed wallpaper, but there are some icons that have been appropriately themed, like C-3PO's head being the default face in the Contacts app, and the Rebel Alliance and Sith Empire logos on the lock screen. Those are the only Star Wars icons I know of, but there are some more wallpapers here to choose from some of which I think are pretty cool. I noticed a couple of these are kind of strangely cropped, but they're all still super cool, so I guess it doesn't really matter. We're not limited to normal static wallpapers, though. 
There are actually some pretty cool Star Wars themed live wallpapers on here. From your home screen you can watch the Millennium Falcon fly through asteroid fields from two different angles, or watch it escape the space slug, which is kind of hard to see actually because most of it is behind the amp tray. Some more entertaining options include this one where you sit in the cockpit and can shake your phone to jump to light speed, complete with sound effects. If you're more with the R2-D2 theme though, you might want to try this rather confusing wallpaper where you tilt your phone to guide him out of a door, then back in. And it's just this over and over again. But the last live wallpaper is a simple slideshow with various, often seemingly random screenshots from The Empire Strikes Back. Within this screensaver, there are four themes to choose from as well, in space easily being my personal favorite set. Continuing with the home screen customization, we have one Star Wars themed widget called R2-D2 Clock. Pretty self-explanatory. It's just R2-D2's decapitated head repurposed as a cute little clock, and I mean little, literally. I personally like this one to be a bit bigger or at least resizable. But I mean, it is big enough to easily read, and it's a neat little widget for what it is. Continuing on with the theme of customization, we've also got some custom ringtones and notification sounds. Something I thought was rather strange about this is that they are all just R2-D2 noises. There are no other Star Wars related ringtones or notification sounds that I found. I could have possibly missed them, but I don't think so. But yeah, you have several R2-D2 sounds to pick from, including testy outburst, spunky attitude, happy singing, a couple random others, and of course my favorite, R2's signature scream. And that's it for Star Wars-esque customization. A bit underwhelming perhaps, but it gets more disappointing when we get to the included Star Wars apps. And to clarify, I'm not the only one who found the lack of Star Wars themed apps a little disappointing. So what are the two, yes two, built-in Star Wars apps? Well first we've got an app called The Best of R2-D2, which is simply, as the name would suggest, a collection of clips of R2-D2 set to the original Cantina Band song. A little fun fact that many people don't know, the Cantina song is actually called Mad About Me, and actually is in a genre of its own. Just look it up, trust me, you won't regret it. But getting back to what we were talking about, the best of R2-D2 is one of those things that seems like a cute idea at first, but starts feeling kind of lazy. Maybe you'll watch this once, but likely never again. I can't imagine anyone watching this nearly 3 minute video very often for entertainment, but who knows, that's just my opinion. Moving on to the second and last Star Wars themed app here, Star Wars ESB Binoculars. This is a simple little app or game thing that simulates looking through whatever those binoculars they used in Star Wars were called. You can move the view around by moving your phone and zoom in and out, and that's about it. I'm going to quote Christopher Brozio from Technogog here because writing original content is hard. In his review of this phone, he said in regards to the binoculars app, it's interesting for all of about five minutes. I would rather have seen some real Star Wars games on the phone, and I couldn't agree more. With the silly toy-like design on the back of the phone, I certainly would have expected more fun in games, but nope, there's just not much to see here. Oh, and remember earlier when I said that I thought it was strange that the themed ringtones and notification sounds were just R2-D2 noises? Well, the reason I said that is because this phone feels a little disconnected. Like, what even is this phone called? Is it the Motorola 2 R2-D2? Motorola Droid 2 Star Wars Edition? It seems kind of like whoever thought this up really didn't know anything about Star Wars because it's like they started to make this phone fully R2-D2 themed, but decided to add some random elements of Star Wars in here like that binoculars app. What does that even have to do with R2-D2? But in the ringtones, they just did R2-D2 sound effects and no other Star Wars themed stuff. It just seems a little uneven, don't you think? What I'm seeing here is that Motorola didn't put much money into this special edition droid, and they really just slapped onto the phone whatever R2-D2 and or general Star Wars stuff they could afford. And it makes sense that they were a little wary about putting too much into this phone because they could probably predict it wouldn't be a big seller. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't have purchased this phone either. It seems kind of silly and just not something I would use as my daily driver. Of course, now I have it and I love it as part of my collection. It's cute, it's Motorola, it's Star Wars, what's not to love? Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I'd love to know what you all think about this video and this smartphone. If you had one or have one now, let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, it would be awesome if you could leave it a like and subscribe. Also, I'd like to thank each and every one of you who support this channel by watching, subscribing, and interacting in the comments. You all make this channel possible, and I'm very thankful for it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.